Yeah. According to a new poll by Ipsos, 75% of British people hate Meghan Markle. Is it that low? <laughs> yeah. Is it true or is it false? Well, that's the question, is it? Is it that low? I know that I know the poll you're on about, so I happen to do know for a fact that this is true, but uh, it, I mean, Meghan Markle's had quite the week, really, hasn't she? Because I mean, um, she's flying from the US straight to, uh, I want to say, Nigeria, where she's going to meet Prince Harry there, because he's been snubbed by the king, mm -hmm. uh, which, I mean, that's quite a snubbing, isn't it? When your own dad doesn't want to see you. <laughs> but the other thing that really worries me is that we have a king who seems to me to be not interested in any of the things that a king should be interested in. Right. That is to say, you're agitating about climate change. You now have the real Prince of Wales, by the way, he's called William, for your yeah. information, <laughs> um, who is agitated on mental health, as yes. if we didn't have enough people yes. yeah. worrying about yeah. mental health. But at the same time, we've confronted over the last 15 years the most fundamental attack on our central constitutional principles mm. that has ever been. And we haven't had a peep from the monarchy. And it, it suddenly, we were, I mean, I'm deeply old-fashioned. I was brought up when you sort of trusted this kind of thing. And you saw the monarch as the final constitutional backstop. Yes, yes. And instead, the coronation was bizarre. The coronation had no political element no. at all. We have a monarchy which deals with everything that doesn't matter. Yeah, mm. it's, it's interesting, really, because this poll is literally was done uh, a, year, um, a year on from the coronation, and um, the king's approval rating st stands now at 56%, which is quite good. It's, which I was genuinely quite surprised at, if I'm being brutally honest. That's like honest. 56 Rishi Sadak. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so that implies Rishi has got a positive... Positive, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. I like the idea, obviously, of the monarchy being the ultimate, you know, the ultimate decision-maker. However... That's no. because I am a staunch royalist. OK. So if you were to look at the, the popularity of the monarchy, certainly in my lifetime, I've seen it disintegrate. And even now, just hearing, as you mm. said, Pete, the fact that King Charles stands at 56% with approval rating, I'm also surprised by that because I just have to think back to the coronation where I was one of the people who lined the streets of London hoping to catch a glimpse of their Poor majesties as they... Poor pathetic creature. Oh, <laughs> yes, very happy, very, very I can't happy. Believe, I can't believe Mr Henry VIII yeah, is going to say. I, knew, I was <laughs> the country. I was elated. I was very happy. And I did actually manage to catch a glimpse of them. It was a very magic moment for me. I liked it. However, the number of people who took it, their time to be there holding up these ridiculous banners saying, not my king. Mm. First of all, let me make it clear, he is your king. You might yeah. not like it, but he is your king. The fact that they actually that they took the time to do that tells me that there was this much this venom, this hatred for the monarchy that I just find really quite foreign and quite un but unpleasant. I, the thing, so, sorry, sorry yeah. to jump, but the thing I find quite interesting actually is just how much emphasis is put on what is a very small group of people. Like you said, these people yes, are holding up the blanket. It's tiny. It's, it's tiny. tiny. It is tiny, in, tiny. It's so, it, it, um, it's there's quite a number of them in, in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there could be, you know, the, the deep bog-like expectations yeah, for this guy. OK, yeah. we're going to go to... We better move quickly. Yeah. We're going to go to the question. So according to a new poll, do 75... Do only 75% only of British people hate Meghan Markle? Is it true or is it false? I think this is true. It's absolutely true. OK, the Boy Scouts of America is changing its name for the first time in its 114-year history in a bid to boost inclusivity. It wants to appeal to, get ready for it, non-binary children. Um, David, is it true or is Absolutely it false? Absolutely true. It's unbelievable. It is, um, no, it's not. Um, we, because I'm afraid, uh, for once, the Americans are behind the Brits. Mm, we, did yeah, we did this ages ago, ages ago. Um, yeah. despite the fact that you have, you used to have what were called girl guides, girl guides. and you now have these two things that have turned into a kind of liquidised soup mm. of pronouns. It's a, it is preposterous. I mean, we, the, the, the old joke in my village was, why were the guides in the toilet? They were searching for the brownies. Yeah. I actually think this is uh, something a little bit more than that, because uh, they, they were going to say this is all about inclusivity, but what they don't mention is that the membership of the, the, of the Boy Scouts or whatever it is they're calling, I think scouting or whatever they're called now, has actually been on a radical decline. Yeah. And I actually think this is actually more about trying to boost numbers and they're riding the wave now, if, of this if they're stuff. appealing to transvestites or whatever, mm. are, are transsexuals, that will not boost numbers. No. no. Uh, what, what is... What, well, seem, what, again, sort of being serious for more than a second, um, what seems to me to be extraordinary is there is now a crisis of masculinity yeah. yes. on both sides of the Atlantic. Boy, I mean, again, I loathe the idea 
on scouting. The, the idea of running yeah. around in short trousers yeah. you know, um, uh, uh, in the cold weather and all the rest. But but lots I'd of... love to see you in a yeah. tent. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I would love. I have never ever. I would I've never pay. entered a tent, slipped in a I'll tent. I tell you what, I, which, which badge do you think you'd earn by the end of today? I tell, <laughs> I tell, I tell, I tell you what, I, I tell you what, I think. something very pink yeah. Yeah. with gold tassels. With tell, gold tassels no, on no, it, yeah. I will. But, I will but, tell you. Know, why don't we have? Sorry, why don't we recognise that the whole world that Baden Powell envisaged was something that actually appealed to lots and lots of boys? It did. That it helped them. It organised. It's be Lord Baden Powell, he said, on reflection, naming the book Scouting for Boys was a bad idea. <laughs> but, um, but Phil, uh, look, I, I, I want to ask you a question about all of this trans and binary and whatever, because I was thinking, we always debate, um, are trans women women? But we never seem to debate, are they trans? I was thinking about a lot of these people. What has Leah Thomas done other than growing her hair long? I mean, this guy is not transitioning in any meaningful way whatsoever. There's, these people are simply just declaring themselves to be non-binary, declaring themselves to be women, declaring themselves to be men, and, and doing nothing else. Oh, no, they're, they're, they're wrong. Me... They wear lots of slap and funny dresses. Mm. Well, no, let me be very clear. I, I, when I think of someone who wishes to live that lifestyle, I have no problem with it. It's up to them. Here's where I have a problem is when it starts to impact on the wider society. Yeah. So when you have a minority group, and let's be honest, it is a minority group, telling the majority that they a, think wrong, they behave incorrectly, that they should change their ways, they should change all of the lessons they were taught in life just to accommodate a select few people who wish to live their life in a certain way. The beauty of the country we live in is people have the freedom to live however they want. Knock yourself out. Do whatever the heck you want, as long as it doesn't well, cause Phil, harm here's to what, other people. Here's what I don't understand about yeah. it, right? So there have always been effeminate men. That, that has always existed in history. So now we're pushing them to be... We're pushing them to be trans, right? But then we're also saying those people who don't want to do that will have to do the girly stuff as well. Yeah. So surely there are more options available to anyone than ever before, but we won't present them to masculine young people. Well, I, I also think it's because... Unless they're women. You, well, I think it's also because, unfortunately, we live in a day and age where masculinity has suddenly become quite toxic. And yeah. it's outrageous. Allegedly. Allegedly. And no, allegedly, but it's outrageous to well, even think like that. Uh, uh, but equally, of course, we're suddenly going to have war. Yes. OK. There is war. And do you know what? Toxic masculine virtues do come in quite handy, handy. Yeah. when you need a little bit of... In all seriousness here, OK? I'm uh, being uh, very serious. No, no, I know, but the problem that we've got, right, is that if you think about how long have we been told that men of a certain age who so much as look at a child must be a pervert. Indeed. If you think that there is this... this or a rapist. Or uh, oh, absolutely, yeah, you know, yeah. all of these different things. But you've then got this notion of... And we see it. I'm sorry, let's say it how it is. This may be very rich coming from a panel where there are four white British men on. But let's be honest. When you look across the TV world, across the radio world, there is an effort to try and minimise the number of white men that yeah. we see on TV. Let's call it out. Let's well, say I mean, how I mean, it is. Fun, fun enough, I was, it's I, not fashionable. It's I was talking, I was a talking to a world. friend of mine who watched the King's Speech, and, and Eastern European, so obviously they, they don't come from a multi-ethnic multi, multi -ethnic, uh, background, but he said, but you've, you've chosen the choir based on the one that has the fewest white people. Yeah. And now that is another way of looking at it, that literally that's the way that we... But we, you, made, you made a brilliant point which is that the whole notion of the protection of minorities has been stood on its head. Yes. yes. That the majorities are there now to set the rules. Yes. And what is really terrifying, I don't know whether you realise this, human rights laws have been stood on their head. Yes. The original purpose of human rights laws, this is why Churchill was enthusiastic about them, was to protect the individual against the state. We've decided they exist to protect minorities against majorities. The only person, the only force that can protect minorities against the majority is the state. So, David, have the Boy Scouts of America changed their name? Is yes. it true or is it's it false? absolutely true. It's absolutely true. OK, Phil, Vladimir Putin has been sworn in for a fifth term as Russian president in a completely free and mm. fair election. I just want to ask you, in addition to it being true or false, I think that Vladimir Putin's greatest contribution to Russia now is he is a brilliant thief. And beyond that, I don't see what he's done that's positive for these people. But they love him. Well, he's he's managed to persuade a, a swathe of the Russian population how wonderful he is, so I suppose he's done that for them. 
No, I, I would say, I have to say that actually, having watched some of the ceremony where he was sworn in, Boy, oh boy, did he get his steps in that day. Yeah. He watched the procession from when he mm. left his but office. But look at the size of those mm. rooms. And this is one of the, in the, those grand rooms yes. of the Kremlin. It's a wonderful story. This actually goes back to Yeltsin. Yes. That whole space where St. George's Hall, where this took place, used to be the debating chamber of the Supreme mm. Soviet. And the right. first thing Yeltsin did uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union was to demolish this entire thing and rebuild the czarist era. Vast, vast doors, 20, you saw those gold doors. They are 20 feet high. No, Vladimir Putin's just really short. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're wrong. OK, um, they're, they're 25 feet. No. <laughs> what they did was, what, what, what they did was, they got a scale model of Vladimir yeah, Putin yeah, and yeah. thunderbird him. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, it, it, the, the real point, the, the only way you can actually understand Putin is that he's a czar. Yes. Uh, the, what the, czar. The, the czar. That what this that what this this election means is he is the person who will have ruled Russia longest. He's now exceeded Stalin. Yeah. yeah. The only other person who's ruled Russia for the same period of time is Catherine the Great yes. of the 18th century. And what he's doing is he's consciously imitating her. However, yeah. however, and she. By the way, she is the person responsible for conquering the Crimea. Yeah. And the whole of that Black Sea. She's coast. although on the other hand. She is responsible also for Russian imperial stout, yeah. which uh, I, I'm a shareholder. This may surprise you. I'm a shareholder in my local brewery, and we make uh -huh. an excellent, excellent time. But, but Phil, Phil, here is here is one thing I will say, in defence maybe of Vladimir Putin, he is popular. So even though the election was probably not free and fair, even though political opponents are intimidated, even though there is no... The odd concentration. No, I, yeah. I'm sorry. It's a bit of poisoning. He's, he's, he's yes. a mist of unpopularity. No, 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 no. I think he's... Let's be honest about this, and I, I'm almost reluctant to say this because heaven knows what my fate will be now. But it's amazing the number of people who disagree with him who end up dead. Let's just yeah. be honest about this. So I don't think it's a case of popular because he's a wonderful human being. I think he's popular because people are absolutely terrified of the prospect of what happened. It will be done. <laughs> that was uh, that was Vladimir. That was Vladimir. Uh, just, yes, you know why I've no, got this no, pen no, here. <laughs> no, just, don't just, you think? Just uh, uh, Phil, by the way, um, I noticed David. Don't don't keep drinking the water, Phil. Have yeah. you finished I'd yours? Be, I'd be careful with the tea, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> don't but, you think though? It's incredible though. If you think of sort of where we were, only a matter of a couple of decades ago with Gorbachev, mm. you know, yeah. and to what's happened to Russia now in such a short space. But I, he's I, just I, gone back to being what yeah. Russia always oh, was. Our we have this stupid notion that you can basically change countries. Yeah. It takes absolute defeat. The only reason Germany changed was absolute defeat and destruction mm. in war. Yeah. Russia did not have that. On the contrary, it looks back to its enormous part in the defeat of Nazi Germany, which is why uh, wh why Putin constantly talks about this. But we, we've had this inane... But we've, yeah. we've also... And I'm going I'm to say this to you, David. I get the impression, and, and I've spent some time in Russia, mm -hmm. not a vast amount of time in Russia, I get the impression that one of the things that the Russians believe, just in their hearts, is that every generation suffers and as long as Russia appears to be great right. on the world stage, right. we will always. eat rats. That's right. It always but, has been. But, it, but if you have... Had, Russia has never mm. known freedom. No. Yes. China has never known yes. freedom. And our problem is we went through this idiotic period, partly from the Second World War, more particularly from the 1980s, where we thought everybody was going to be like us. But I, but and I, we would all join together. No, but I would, tell you, I, would tell you, I would tell you one thing. Ring a though. ring a ring. I remember... I remember the Christmas of 1989, and, and we believed, and, and I mean, this anathema to you, that was the end of history. You know, mm. the, 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 uh, the Soviet Union had been, sorry, the, um, the Nazis had been defeated in 1945. Yeah, yeah. The Soviet Union was days or weeks away War from collapsing. War was over. A yeah. perfect future. There was no need for no. force. We could abandon armed forces. We thought... It was, pa patriotism was old We fashioned. thought We thought freedom had won. We thought yeah. that in 1990, right. there was no chance for dictatorship anymore. Khmer Rouge gone, Soviet yeah. Union gone, yeah. Nazi Germany we gone. Were fools. Fools. Total, total but actually, fools. half of our problem in this country is that we seem to spend 
quite a lot of time thinking that the rest of the world will look to us for inspiration. Yes, <laughs> when yeah. we actually, as a country, can't decide ourselves how we want to behave or how we want to live. So this is not really a wonder oh. that the world around us is falling apart. Well, what's, what's oh, happening, exactly. and we are going to have to move on, but what, of course, is happening with all of these dictators around the world, they are pointing at the wokery of the West and going, look what democracy yeah, gets yeah. you. Yeah. OK, yeah. so, Phil, has Vladimir Putin been sworn in for a fifth term? Is it true or false? So, sadly, it's it's true. It's absolutely true. That was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. So to Pete, yeah. a Green Party council in Leeds has been criticised for calling his local election victory a win for the people of Gaza. Oh, my Lord. I saw this and I genuinely... Had it been down the road in Newcastle, it would have been a win for the people of Gaza. Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was... I was... <laughs> Which team does he play for? I, I, no, I'm not, not going to lie. How long have you been holding on to that one? <laughs> he's going he's to turn up with a rotisserie chicken. I, I told you. Uh, a, a and that could be just as much of a wreck. It's Bobby, Bobby Davro. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't you answer the phone, Bobby? Oh, it was yeah. a rough night. Yeah. <laughs> True. Well, okay. well, no, this was an astonishing thing that we've seen. And the um, the kind of this particular council, uh, council has offered his apologies for anybody upset. So that's not really apologizing for what happened. So he basically got elected. And then, like I said, he was, said it was a victory for the people of Gaza. Uh, this is a um, council seat in Leeds. So it has a huge... Um, kind of Palestinian and Muslim population there, and probably not a big Palestinian population. No, no, yeah, but, no, 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 Muslim population. Yeah. And I think he won the vote by like three thousand, uh, has sort of like a three thousand majority, which is very, quite impressive for a local candidate. Yeah. You know, this guy really did whip votes. He Does knew this, what he was okay, doing. So, so, Pete, as as somebody who's interested in yeah. politics, is a political strategist, the the fact that these elections are becoming about Gaza is that a reference to uncontrolled immigration? Is it a reference to the fact that nobody cares about local government? Or is it somewhere in between? I, I, think, it, I think it's actually the fact that the, the vast majority... If we look at the local elections just as, 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 as themselves, what really happened was a lot of people just stayed at home. Yes. The turnout was quite abysmal. Was very, many, very, many low. very low. Very low. Most people are sick to death of the two main parties. So this has allowed a kind of opening for... These are more kind of what, like chancer parties. Yes. And the uh, I love that chancer, chancer party. party. To try to actually actually get some political power. But what and, is, uh, this is the day if the Greens would see themselves as chancers? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. But well, what is extraordinary is that it's the infiltration of the Greens. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, and um, there is, of course, you can make one point. Uh, green is very important in Muslim symbolism. Yeah. If you look at that's very true. If, you, if yeah. you look at the flags of most Muslim states, but, they indeed in Ireland. I mean, there's, rem, remember <laughs> the, that, Irish, when, when the Irish I was, flag is not a reference to Pakistan. <laughs> when, when, I, when I was, when, despite the fact that the orange for the desert, but uh, when I was when I was a young man, I was always told to distrust countries where there's green in the flag. <laughs> uh, but but there is something desperately dangerous going on. Yes. We, I mean, what is perfectly clear, and again, I'm sorry, I'm going to utter a word which will probably again be clipped, Enoch Powell, um, or indeed Norman Tebbit. Yeah. Tebbit's, Christian, uh, Te Tebbit's cricket test, for these people, there is no commitment no. whatever to Britain. They, all their frames of reference are in the Middle East or Pakistan, and they are religiously, but, but, but see, but, they are religiously defined. But let's we do clear. nothing about but let's, it. But let's be because clear. Because we're terrified. Yeah. Let's, let's, terrified be, let's, of let's, let's be clear. I, I worked at the European Parliament in Brussels, right? When I was there, I hung round... That's how you can afford to do this program. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I hung round... I hung round well, with... Well, that suit looked tailored. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hung round with English people. I spoke English. I didn't attempt... French or, or, or anything else. All these else. foreign lingo. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and, and I didn't... And, and it struck me that I had been an immigrant once in my life, and actually, because I was over there for work only, and I had no particular care for Belgium, I don't dislike the place, mm. but, of course, I was interested in... If there had been an English person standing for the local council, I might have voted, yeah. otherwise I wouldn't. That's what happens when you bring over vast numbers yeah, of economic migrants. You're in a completely different position. You're in an, in an international organisation. Yes, I, I get that. And you, you were there for a specific purpose. These are people who have come to Britain, who are full British citizens, without, as far as one can see, the faintest interest in Britain. Yeah, and this is what agree. is absolutely terrifying. And I think that the next step is going to be beyond the infiltration of the Greens, we are going to see an Islamic part. I, I, I've got, I, I've got, I, to, I've got I, to ask I, you, I, Phil, sorry. Phil, I've got to ask you a question. Um, are, you, are you at risk if you're openly Jewish in London? Well, I think that you're only at risk... I mean, just to state the record, I am 
openly Jewish. I think that one is only at risk if one believes themselves to be at risk. As far as I'm concerned, I was born and raised here. So anyone who wants to come to the UK and tell me that I'm somehow less British than they are or tell me how to live my life, I won't tell you exactly what I'll say to their face because I'm not well, allowed to say it on seen, TV. But, seen, but let me make it very clear. Let them try and see where it gets well, we've seen, But we've seen but, this before, haven't we? You know, people like Shamima Begin rocking up, telling Christians in the Middle East that they're crusaders. She's from Tower mm -hmm. Hamlets. But look, I mean, I, I couldn't care less about her, to be honest, but my... Well, I could. I, I suppose... I'm, des I'm desperate for her to get a long prison sentence. <laughs> <laughs> they won't. No, by, so, the, by the way, by the way, Phil, let me tell you, I'm allowed to say I wanted to get a long prison sentence because that is a downgrade from what I was yes, previously... Yes, it, well, it is. Previously <laughs> it really is. Instead, you're going to hotel. The oil pills just I just, treason <laughs> were interesting. Yeah. But can I just point out, though, I think that there are actually more layers of complexity at work here, which, as much as I completely understand your point, David, about the infiltration of individuals who have come here who have absolutely <coughs> no intention whatsoever to be Any remotely British, yeah. OK? Yeah. I understand that. That is obviously a massive point in this. But it actually runs deeper. So for the last seven months, what has our, our news agenda right here in the UK been dominated yes. by? Absolutely it's absurd. dominated it's by, right, is the war in Gaza. And I'm sorry, but most British people I speak to are more worried about the cost of electricity. Yeah. Yeah. They're more worried about the potholes in Although the road. Although a, more more a lot of our viewers fell, and I'll just leave it out here, are extremely concerned about the issue in Gaza and Israel in the context that the reason that, you, that you've said, in the context that we're obsessed with it, in the context that there are riots on the streets, yeah. in the context... But there are riots on the streets because we're obsessing over it. Yeah. So I think... Or people, because we're people, indulging people, them. People, we're indulging people, them. people need to understand how dangerous media can be, OK? And mm. I'm speaking to someone who's worked in media for many years, and proudly so, and actually has taken some of those editorial decisions to put certain stories on the air before. The more that we focus on this matter and this issue, the more awareness there is of the general public, and the more the general public speak about an issue that is highly, highly complex, that yes. goes back centuries, that most of the most... Thousands of years. Thousands. The, the brightest scholars struggle with the details of the Middle East. So how on earth is some lunatic in the middle of England who has absolutely no yeah. flaming idea where the Middle East even is mm. on a map I've got to, expected I've got, to talk I've got about to, it? I've and got then to say to you, I've spent some it. time in the Middle East and I don't say this to criticise anybody, but from my perspective, it is far too hot to not have a beer. <laughs> I've just got to say yeah. that to you. <laughs> anyway, no, no, so can, can, is occasionally <laughs> against the yeah. war. Can I, just, can I just make one really quick point just before we move on? Is I, I, when we talk, when I see people in these kind of shows talk about this stuff, you keep hearing the phrase that multiculturalism has failed. That is incorrect. Multiculturalism has worked perfectly because the central tenet that nobody talks about in multiculturalism is the rejection of the native country right. and their customs. When we when we talk about culture, most people seem to think it's food and music. Oh, that's and what language. they always say. Food. It is not just that. It, it is politics. Politi it is politics. politics. It is views on minorities. It is views on women. It is views on everything. And when you import that many people from countries that do not share our values, this is what happens. Not our political values. Yeah. Our, our political values. Political values. Yeah. Okay, so Pete, so Pete, um, has a Green Party candidate said that uh, there's been a victory for Gaza in his own election? He, he has, it's true. It's absolutely true. he said lots true. of other things, things too. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not the only rotter we've come across <laughs> easily. Okay, so David, Sadiq Khan has abolished mayoral elections in London and declared himself London's glorious leader <laughs> for life. Is it true? And he's also adopted the surname of Putin. Yeah. Uh, and poisoned umbrellas are being yeah. delivered we were uh, as, as campaigning we were, think, aids. We, were, we were thinking of him more as Kim Jong-un. Yeah, yeah. It could be that, too. He's, um, he's quite short, but he's, he's not got the bulk. No, he certainly, I mean, he would have to wear a fat Genghis suit. Khan? Yeah. He would have to wear a fat mm. I think Genghis Khan was rather a strapping chap. <laughs> you know, he fathered more children than any person yeah. recorded yeah. in history. But, um, and, 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 the, and Boris Johnson. So, yeah. But unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not true. But the effective unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, it's not uh, uh, that it's not true. But the uh, the um, the coronation that he received as mayor delivers effectively the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is frightening? You see, what I think is really frightening about this. If you look at somebody like Andy Burnham. 
whom I know very slightly. Yeah. We're at the same college at Cambridge and all the rest of it, uh, though he's much younger than I am. Is but, he? But <laughs> <laughs> Your makeup people yeah. are brilliant. Yeah. 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 No. Oh, when, 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 when I went in, I said, repair. <laughs> yeah, who's saying? Who's saying? So, right. so, uh, Dr. David Starkey, that was your local paper shop who said that paper round was rotten. <laughs> <laughs> he really, he really struggled with that. If his was bad, how bad was mine? Absolutely. It aged him. It aged Absolutely. him. Absolutely. He was but, old before his years. Yeah, but, 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 but Burnham is you know, a campaigner for the economy of Manchester. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. is terrifying about Khan, and this is the basic charge against him, he's no interest in the economy of no. London. Everything that he's doing is slowing London mm. down. Cities depend on ease of movement. Yes. They depend on economic growth. They, a lot, and London, London's economy is suffering. But, but Sadiq Khan has been venerated as having done phenomenally well. Sadiq Khan, I don't think Sadiq Khan's a bully. I think he's a spoiled brat. Yes. And, and the reality is his policies have been horrendously unpopular. And what he's attempted to do is crawl across the line. I don't think a 10% margin is that no, good. I, I, he, didn't, I, I, he got a tie. He got, yeah. There was only a 1.5 swing yeah, it was, to yeah, Conservative yeah. in London. It was, it was tiny. And, and I, if you'd had a better candidate, if the, to, the, the Tory party, again, it's done the equivalent of Natalie Elphick. It, 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 you know, his candidate was about as impressive well, as what I What I will Elphick. just say on that um, point, though, is... When we, I, I listened to Theresa Villiers, which I'd make a real not to, but she was on the TV anyway. What ever happened to her? <laughs> what's she up to these days? Oh God, well, is she, she actually she, still an MP? I, I think so, yeah. I think she like, is. You, you, know, know. Know. you mean Theresa May? Yeah. <laughs> You're getting no. confused with Shirley yeah, no, Williams. But, um, her hair is much yeah. neater. It's but, about the only difference, but her yeah, hair no, is But She tidy, was saying yes. that Susan Hall campaign was, uh, was too negative, and I was like, well, what is this woman talking about? There was no campaign for Susan Hall. CCHQ dropped that woman exactly. as quickly as exactly. anybody else. Now, some people may say that she was the wrong candidate, but what no, annoyed... No, what no it, was, it, was, it was racism. The number of people that turned to me and said, it is inconceivable now that a white person will be elected I, I think London. I think that now, is... I don't believe that's true. Nor that's what they no, say. I, I, don't, yeah, I don't believe in, the, in, the, in what they say being correct. But what I will say is I think there was absolutely zero campaign for Susan. And like we said, a 1.9% swing is nothing. Tiny. It's tiny. Absolutely insignificant, really. And well, yet he hails it as this great oh, yeah, of course, of course. But then, to be fair, if the Tories had won, it would have been a it would have been a momentous win and all the rest of it. Even if would it, had it just gone... with you, Les? Uh, I, it would have been I, I, I don't know. I think one thing people forget about London is that it is a value values based vote. It is not an economy based vote. So people in this city vote based on things more like the woke stuff. They don't necessarily vote based on policies, and that's why you end up with people like Sadiq Khan who are ruining this city. Well, That's I have to say, problem. my only concern about Sadiq Khan, uh, well, one of my concerns is that his power is being extended beyond mm. Greater London. Yes, it is. And so I have local train services now being run by that man. And I will tell you, if you think he didn't like Susan Hall, he hates me yeah, but... with an absolute passion. <laughs> well, what's Whenever also... he sees me, he just scowls. What's also important is that we have to remember... Quite proud what we have to remember is that London is the economic driver no, of this absolutely. country. Well, the uh, point, it's a point I'm making. Yeah, and exactly. And... It is the catastrophe that we... Are, that everybody just takes for granted that London will boom. No, yeah. And in, everything is being done to stop it. Yeah. The, the LTNs, the bus lanes mm. or whatever, cities depend on communication. We're absolutely. stopping communication. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. why, why has no one called out before? Let's be honest about this, OK? Why why is it no one that's called out that said that everything is being done to slow London down and then we're told it's a problem that needs fixing? So, in other words, mm. if you think of the way that traffic lights are phased, I am They're tragic insane. enough to have looked They're at this. Insane. Traffic lights have been phased deliberately badly. OK, yes. this was actually yeah. first implemented when Ken Livingston was, was yeah. mayor of yeah. London. Mm. Deliberately phased badly to increase congestion. Then we're told, oh, London's really congested. We need to introduce a congestion charge yeah. to help. Yeah. With that congestion comes more pollution because naturally, if cars are stationary, they can't get anywhere. There's more pollution everywhere. Then with we more, have Eulers. With more, absolutely. Then we have Eulers. With more parking restrictions everywhere, where people can't freely yeah. park, people are driving around and around more and more in a bid to try and get parking. So therefore, they are ultimately. Oh, up it's the Margaret Thatcher, yeah. and it's the old joke. She says, "You Les, if you want to." The lady's not. Not saying that. Not saying that. She's why, not for that. Why are? I'm sorry, but why? Why are Londoners being this dumb about it? There's literally well, no other word I can use to describe it. I agree. How can is it the possible? Problem. You can see all of okay, before okay, us. Okay, guys, David it. Starkey, has he Kim Jong-un style abolished the London elections? 
Is it true or false? False. It is absolutely false. Not that it would make much difference. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> that was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. We're going to reintroduce our guests. They are Pete Barnes, Dr. David Starkey and Phil Dave. And David, a little birdie tells me that you are friends with Natalie Elphig, I the think... new Labour MP for Dover. <laughs> she she <laughs> was the word, the word friend, friend uh, is entire. <laughs> I have encountered this woman. So, is so that since she went to so Labour? So for those for those people who do not understand why it's e it sounds bizarre, an anti-immigration MP joining Labour, but the story is even more bizarre than that, isn't it? The, bizarre, the story is is ultra bizarre. This woman is only an MP because her husband, who was an MP before her, did something naughty to two women mm. and went to jail. Yes. At which point, Central Office, in its deep, <laughs> profound wisdom, decided that they would dig this obscure woman of no purpose and of no reason out and make her an MP. Doesn't and it make you I... proud to be British? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It makes me ashamed to be a Conservative. Yeah. And I think it's one of the things that we really... You know, we're all supposed to be being very funny. Mm. There are times the humour dies. Mm. When you actually choose somebody who is to be a representative of the people on the grounds that they are the... And also, it's a very strange story. Is she the wife? Is she the ex-wife? Yeah. The whole yeah. game has been constant. So basically, so basically, let's just be clear what the Conservative this Party is, it, stands it, accused of. The Conservative Party stands accused of losing one of their MPs to a criminal conviction and then rewarding his wife with the seat for, what, because they felt sorry for him? No, they I, think, him? I think presumably... Um, shall, shall we actually try to think the best of them? Presumably they thought she was the best available possible person to represent Dover. I, I had an encounter with him, with her at a local event, and, and I taxed her with the fact that, interestingly enough, she's supposed to have resigned over borders. Yes. Mm. I said to her, isn't the fundamental purpose of a government, finally, to do justice and to defend its borders? And she denied it. And so this is a woman, and it was a, it was a deeply unpleasant encounter. Mm. Um, I behaved. This will not surprise you. I behaved badly mm -hmm. because I was so appalled at the simple, again, let's use proper words, stupidity of her answer. Yeah, that I lost my temper. So you, so you, you contend that the problem with Natalie Elphig is that she's thick as the wall. I think. Well, a she's thick, but that's. Poor, poor woman, there are lots of thick people, but the sensible thing is not to put them into Parliament. Yes. And what is, remember, there's, this is the, the, the uh, there was another very recent crossing of, mm. crossing of, of, of the eye, crossing of, 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 of the floor of the house. And from somebody who uh, had been briefly a health minister, yeah. and only offered as his reason, Gold. that the Conservatives were not sufficiently mm. in tune with the notion of public service. Mm. Now, if you want a party that is devoted mm. to the idea of the public service, you vote Labour. Yeah. You don't have a Tory MP saying that. And we've, we've, we've produced this ridiculous soup. And what on earth is the Labour Party doing welcoming a woman who a few months ago voted for Liz Truss? Yes. Now, this, I, make, this turns our entire political system into complete contempt. Yes. Anyway, I, I will say one thing about Daniel Poulter, who's the former government minister who defected to Labour on the grounds that uh, he said that he was committed to public service. Well... I shared a corridor with him at the House of Commons, and I believe that the only reason he's gone to Labour is to get a job after he leaves Parliament. Don't employ him. Don't his is to get a peerage. His is to get a peerage. And I imagine Elphick will do the same, because what is so bizarre is she's, she's not going to stand again. No, that's the, the Labour, but you can now have the You have the absurd position. There is an in-place Labour candidate in Dover, Mm. You have the people of Dover represented by somebody who has betrayed their, the people who elected them. Mm. I mean, why do we have a system in which MPs can simply sneer at the people who elected them, sneer at the, the, reason, sneer at the people who've worked for But the, for reason, the reason we can do it, David, is because the House of Lords appointments has been so oh. denigrated now that they stole them out like sweets. Somebody told me, and once again, I'm nervous about... 
I was about to make a good point. The old nobility was tiny. Yes. The nobility of the the nobility of the 16th century is about 40. Mm. We now have 800. Yes, it's crazy. Um, and and this is the problem. That the, the 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 thing that used to distinguish us from France was France had this vast collection of nobility. We the handful who were serious, mm. in whom the traditions of public service were handed down from generation to generation, until a certain gentleman, now Tony Blair, Knight mm. of the Garter, decided to stop. Okay. I actually think uh, anyway. that's actually one of the most outrageous things I think Sir Tony Blair did do in his time in office, to be honest. It's one of the most underspoken about yeah. things that he did, but I believe it was one of the most fundamental I outrageous things. I agree completely. Uh, we've we talked... might have a joke sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, shall, I, shall, I shall work on this very hard. Yeah, yeah. I shall the work joke, on this very hard. Sadly, the joke is Barlamy. Yeah. No, the joke... Yeah. No, I was going to say, the joke is nothing else. That you're yeah. not yeah. Yeah. The, jo the, the joke is the only one they'll never offer a peerage to is me. Yeah. Um, OK, the first migrant sent back to Rwanda has already disappeared. Is it true or is it false? And if you, you'll get a bonus point for some of the details here. OK, so apparently it is true. <coughs> um, although I have to say, though, that it is staggering that we seem to have sent more MPs and more delegates over to Rwanda. Yeah, than yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm beginning to warm to the whole idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but, but uh, don't get me wrong, I don't yeah. think Very those good. MPs or delegates should have come back. Hey, hang back, on a second, hang on a second. Should we send... Natalie Elphick with three thousand pounds to idea. Rwanda. Yeah, what actually, a lovely yes. idea! Well, no, yeah. Maybe, yeah. No, why not? Indeed, you know, she wants to see like, yeah, migration policy in action. Yeah, she's, yeah. Worried, she's worried about the population of Britain. She can reduce it by, by one. one. <laughs> but it's just—it is absolutely staggering to think that all of these these millions of pounds that have been spent—it is millions mm. because even if it's not just on the Rwanda scheme as, uh, alone, you have to think of the knock-on here. You have to think of the hotels that migrants have been put up in. You have to think of the, the allowance that they've been given. Apparently, this migrant was sent back with £3,000 to go and yeah. spend as they wish, you know, as an incentive. I don't want to incentivize someone to leave. Can, can Tell I, them. I want, Bye. I want information. Has he disappeared in Rwanda? Yes. Well, Apparently that's all so. right. No. <laughs> No, but you don't well, understand. No, well, why, why should, he's getting why a fake we, passport. Well, he's yeah, well, working back in. Why, well, well, yeah, probably actually, not. Actually, I, I sorry, doubt it. So stop for a second. We're going to change this question. Right. F uh, Phil, has somebody gone to Rwanda and not bothered taking the free accommodation? <laughs> right. Because actually, you're right. If we're going to give him three grand anyway, it's better that he's not bothered using the hostel. Yeah. yeah. Well, Who what's cares? also really important to notice about this story? Making it, make it available for Penny Morden. Is, is this but a... also, come on, we're forgetting Rwanda has already worked. It's actually putting the putting the fear of God into the yeah. Irish establishment. Yeah. Yes. And that, that you're apparently seeing, as they claim, people flooding over the border mm. um, uh, between Northern Ireland and... What does it call itself? I think yeah. it calls itself republic. a republic or something, yeah. doesn't it? Um, uh, you're claiming by the way, that, by the way, by the way, f go, f going over an open border that the Irish insisted it was open. The delight of it. I love it. it. The yeah. delight, I mean, the, the, we really, you know, we should pause just for a few seconds. We should have a moment's silence <laughs> for pleasure <laughs> Ple at the absurdity <laughs> of the situation that the Irish yeah. find themselves <laughs> in. And why on earth, Sunak or whatever, don't boast about this yeah. more? Yeah, um, absolutely. It, I mean, it's it's wonderful, it's delicious. Oh, I, I, I think I would have more respect for the politicians if they would turn around and say, do you know what? We don't know how to fix this problem. Exactly. We've actually lost yeah. control and we don't know how yeah. to fix it. Because then people would trust them more in actually trying yeah, but, to but, maybe but, come but up with yeah. it, rather than put up this smoke and mirrors all the damn time. But you see, the Middle East, you were making the point about one of the things that we have completely forgotten is that most important human questions are insolvable. Yes. We have this childish <laughs> idea, it's a bit like being doing a you know, multiple choice exam in school, that there's a right answer. Mm. There usually isn't. There is no right answer in Palestine. Ooh, there yeah. really isn't. Well, for starters, there's, there's, there's in a, Gaza, there's, there's uh -huh. this is actually half the problem, is the fact that people even of... still believe that an area called Palestine exists. That it, it's is a actually half it's a nonsense. the problem. It's a nonsense. Of it's... course it's a nonsense. OK, well, talking of a nonsense, has the one... I mean, I don't know whether I'm sad about this okay. anymore. But OK, has the one person we sent to Rwanda disappeared? True or false? Well, he's only disappeared because he's gone off on holiday. He's coming back. Yeah, yeah. So, no, it is, it is true. It's absolutely true. I'll tell you what, it reminds me of when all those people claimed asylum from Sudan and then immediately went back on holiday there. And now, they were right, it was dangerous because they yeah. did later need to be no, evacuated. The just the funniest anyway. thing, sorry, the funniest thing has, for me has been the fact that every Guardian editorial has been how all these migrants and refugees, uh, all these migrants are absolutely terrified of the Rwanda policy, yet about three months ago they were saying the Rwanda policy 
you know, what, if, what was never going to work. It would, nobody wouldn't deter anybody. Okay. Oh, oh. That was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. A child who ran away from a drag queen story time in Glasgow is now facing charges of committing a hate crime. Is it true or is it false? It should be true. It should, should, be, it should true. be true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would fit with the general sort yeah. of logic of Scottish I'm, I'm politics. I'm not going to lie. When is Scottish? Oh, please. I, 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 the problem with this, with this show is... When it, something sounds that preposterous, it could possibly be true. <laughs> in Scotland, it is, and more, and then, it is astonishing in Scotland. Yeah. Shall I prompt you? We've often toyed with doing a Christmas special of That Was The Woke That Was, where we revisit all the false <laughs> questions <laughs> and see those ones that have become true. Because there have been a number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We should do it for Hogmanay. Yeah, yeah. 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 It should be a Scottish special, <laughs> you know. What have yeah. you got up your kilt, mate? Well, <laughs> I, I mean, like, if we just look at Scotland broadly, I mean, it's like we've just seen the re um, resignation of Humza Yusuf. He's, yeah. he's gone and, you know, you'd have thought that would give some hope to Scotland, but then they put John Sweeney in place, so... You no, know, they, honest, what is amazing, did you ever think you'd miss Alex? I Adams? know, yeah, there's a whole part of it. What is amazing, Phil, about Scotland is the way that no matter what happens politically, they are determined to put through the same legislation, yeah. keep the same policies, and keep going in the same direction. There is no doubt that the that the small c conservatism of Scotland is causing the SNP problems, but they will not divert. Oh, gosh, actually, won't. if you think about it, the SNP and the Conservatives have actually got a lot of similar problems going on. What they do is they're very quick to bin off a leader who turns out to be a poison chalice, but then they carry on with the same pointless and arguably ridiculous policies that has ultimately led to the downfall of yeah. a leader in the first place. If they don't realise that the great British public, whether it be in England, if it be in the UK as a whole, whether it be in Scotland, wherever it may be, is getting fed up to the back teeth of politicians not listening, and that is the problem, yeah. and why these but leaders I want to fall ask, on their sword. I want, I want to ask David a question about your hatred uh, of, of the Blur era. I, I take the stakeholder economy, that's what I, I understand it to be, that basically, through things like just consulting trade unions, through things like... Um, uh, consultations through things like quangos, whichever way you vote, nothing changes. That is the stakeholder democracy. Well, what happened under Blair was everything was done to remove power from Parliament. Yes. That when you create a Supreme Court, you immediately diminu d diminish the supremacy of Parliament. Yes. When you incorporate universal conventions on human rights, that again... The, so, look, there's no accident that we can't deal with immigration, because it's a matter of human rights mm. laws, which yeah. are beyond direct Parliament. parliamentary control. You, 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 The government, as we saw under Boris Johnson, you can no longer control Parliament, even in a crisis, because the courts will intervene. Yes. And, and, and then the final issue was the multiplication of specialist bodies. Yeah. I mean, remember, every important question is not dealt with by Parliament. Yes. Interest rates are not dealt yes. with by Parliament. Climate change policy isn't dealt with by... And, you, and by the way, I, I, I think I mentioned this last time, you have a concern that the power has not passed to specialists, it's, power, power, it's passed to extremists. Well, I think the thing that's... Right, that was the next institution I was going to mention. I was going to mention English nature. You made Tony Juniper... Mm. Who is who is a loon? Who is, <laughs> you, you, might as well have, you might as well have given power to the king. You know, I'm, I'm, seriously. He's and this a, is this is the guy who's obsessed with the crested news. That's right. Yeah. It is, it's, it's the fundamental reason why we can't build. Mm. That when it comes to a choice between housing and newts and bats, newts and bats and Tony Juniper win. And, 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 Tony, and, Tony, and Tony Juniper, let's just be clear, is somebody who whose love of all of these bizarre, um, you know, causes, bats and whatever, he is keeping people in genuine poverty of because course. he will not allow people to be able to afford houses Precisely. as long as there is a bat for him to save. Precisely. I mean, it is, there's, a, there's been a fundamental collapse of good sense and values. And, uh, I mean, fundamentally, we've lost the notion that human beings are the triumphant and necessary mm. species, and instead there's this whole preposterous nature worship 
mm. of of greater um, and. I don't um, like. I, li I like naturism every night. Well, I, yeah. I don't think it's. We don't. I don't think I it's preposterous to be aware of. It. <laughs> you was I'm the, joking. You was, yeah, you was, okay. It's the British Society of Naturists. They've just said we rejected your application. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Pete. Uh, yeah, has... There's a loin cloth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Pete, is it true that a child who escaped drag story time has been done for a hate crime? Is it true or is it false? I genuinely don't know, so I'm going to say that it's false. It's absolutely false for now. For now. <laughs> OK, and the final question is to Phil. OK, a shop assistant at Sainsbury's in Romford has been sacked after 20 years when he was caught taking a plastic bag without paying. Is it true or is it false? Ooh, you do know what you've got me there. I actually don't know the no. answer to this. Um, I, I wouldn't be in the least bit surprised if it was true because of our obsession with single-use plastic. But <laughs> I don't. So it's not the theft. It's not the yeah, theft. It's, it's not, not about the theft. No, no, no theft. Could quite... you imagine? No, no, no. <laughs> theft is quite normal. <laughs> that's that is age. completely normalised. Yeah, actually, yes, in all yes. seriousness, I was at a supermarket recently. It wasn't Sainsbury's. It was another well-known brand. And I d found myself absolutely aghast at the fact that the, 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 the shop assistants, it was one of the self-checkout things, so you know, like the whole unexpected item in the bagging area. All of those of us who legitimately pay using the self-checkouts have to tolerate that nonsense. But apparently, it is so unbelievably useless because someone just walked off with the shopping. The re mm. reason why they knew they'd walked off with the shopping is because that after they had scanned the shopping into the system, the list of all of their groceries that they had bought was still in there. So in other words, they couldn't have completed the transaction because it was still there. And bold as brass, just as normal as anything, as if literally someone was just going to say, oh, it looks like it's sunny outside. The shop assistant used the radio to say, we've had someone walk off, thanks. That was it. That was it. No, yeah. They weren't shocked. They weren't worried about it. No one rushed no, quick look the, at the CCTV. The sad, thing, the sad thing about the self-checkouts is they've decided, and I don't think this will be true forever, um, it's better to let people steal than pay for a real human mm -hmm. to man a checkout. Yeah. Now, I think that will come home to roost, but for now, that's the position. Well, actually, it, it does kind of sort of beg the question whether or not supermarkets such as Amazon Fresh, which has no as much as people don't necessarily like the success that Amazon has, you can't deny that there is something in that model where ultimately you can't pick up something without yeah. automatically being charged for it. And one would like to think that that is going to ultimately be the way that supermarkets go. Not because I'm keen to see checkout assistants lose their job, but because I don't understand why it is that hardworking people like you and me who are yeah. honest enough to go into a supermarket mm. and to buy legitimately should be made to somehow feel like we are in the like minority. Like, yeah. like you're, that you're uh, a we're, mug. Uh, we're yeah. a, that you're a yeah. mug. Yeah. But is that the real really shocking thing, Andre, is that there have been, there have been several cases. Uh, in fact, the, the, the most recent and interesting case in this whole area of shoplifting is for the first time, Marks and Spencer succeeded in a private prosecution oh, wow. for shoplifting. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and the, the private prosecution was made because the person, what had happened was the opposite of what you described. Somebody had done precisely what you described. Security had stopped them. They held them there. They photographed them. They rang the police and the police said, we will do nothing. Mm. I mean, the, fu the fundamental thing behind all of this is the police have decided that property crime is not a crime. Yeah. Unless, you know what? It involves a rich white man in the city, at which point you will turn the entire apparatus on mm. them um, yeah. and to try and take them to the cleaners. But if it is a an ordinary person... To be clear, sorry, you mean unless it's a rich white person who's committed the crime, yes? Well, uh, or may have committed... Allegedly committed. Alleged, 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 allegedly committed. I mean, w one of the things that's most striking, of course, is that so many of the crimes in the city are actually debatable because yes. the rules are so complex. Mm. And yes. nevertheless, they will be pursued. Whereas what is a crime that actually affects everybody? Why are prices high? Precisely because so many items are stolen. And what it is now quite clear, thieves are denied deliberately targeting, which why, why is there a security tag on olive oil? Why is there a security tag on fillet steak? They're deliberately targeting high price items. Mm. And I've every, got, everybody well, pays David, David, everybody I've got to, pays I've got to remember, and, and I, I don't know if, uh, if this happens to other people, but I was shopping in Marks and Spencers and the items that I wanted to buy somebody simply took them all into a bag, put it in the bag and walked out. Yeah. Now, security, turn around and say, the problem that we have is if we stop this person and grab them, the police will prosecute us for assault. Yeah. They won't touch, they won't touch <coughs> the is. people that are shoplifting. OK, so, um, Phil, 
has a shop assistant in... I mean, I can't believe this. You're allowed to shoplift, but you can't take the bag. But yeah. anyway, uh, it has I'm plastic. Going... Plastic. <laughs> plastic bag. I'm, I've go... got, I've I'm, going say... to... I'm going to go on the basis that it is true, but I don't know. I've got to say one thing. And my house has a plastic bag department. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> the turtles. No, no. The, the turtles. Confessions. The no. confession. Don't worry. As I've always said, I believe in recycling. I want the stuff that used to be my packaging to become a hill in Cumbria, <laughs> which is, in fact, recycling. Recycling. Okay, I thought so you were event the tortoise shell became an ashtray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> recycling. Yeah, that's there you right. go. That's, right. so yeah, that's being right. at one with nature. That's right. I want to recycle an elephant so we can have a foot and uh, <laughs> turn it into a nice star. umbrella stand. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so has a uh, shop assistant in Romford been sacked after 20 years for taking a bag? Is it true or false? Well, I'm going to go on the basis that it's Romford, and I'm going to say yes, it's true. It's absolutely true. OK, well, I'm going to give all the scores for this evening. And I was going to give Pete five points. I was going to give David Starkey five points as well. But Phil Dave, you see, technically is my boss as weekend <laughs> editor. <laughs> so, so he gets 5,486 uh, points. So congratulations. Boom, boom, congratulations boom. to <laughs> Phil Dave. Insider, insider <laughs> dealing. Yeah. 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 Excuse me, yeah. can I just point out, in all the time I've appeared on Woke That Was, this is the first time I've won the damn show. So I, don't you take I, that okay, away. Okay, so <laughs> Phil Dave. It's a worthy win. <laughs> Phil Dave wins. A, a mac, an alcoholic beverage of his own choice up to a maximum value of £3.80. Oh. OK, thank you so much to, to David Starkey. Thank you so much to Pete Barnes. Until next time, goodbye.